Hi, I'm Rick Dodd with Siena. I'm here with Dave Borges, who's part of our R&D team up in Ottawa. We're at the OFC 2011 show in Los Angeles. And we wanted to talk a little bit about our WaveLogic coherent optical processors that we just uh, described in the market and provide a little bit more detail for you on these coherent optical processors and what they do for us. So maybe Dave, just to kick it off, can I ask you to talk a little bit about what is WaveLogic in the first place? Right, so WaveLogic is really a name for the DSP chips, the, the purpose-built silicon chips that we use to do all the heavy lifting for the coherent uh, optical engine. So here at OFC, there were really two pieces of news I wanted to ask you about the first one, and that was that the WaveLogic chipset is moving into multiple platforms. So could you talk a little bit about where the WaveLogic coherent optical processors are deployed today and where they'll be later in the year? Okay, so today, the T2 and R2, the second generation optical processors, are actually in the 40 and 100 gig products that we're shipping in the Actiflex 6500. And uh, we're looking at, we're going to be putting those into the 4200 uh, this summer and going forward we're going to port those over to the 5400 series. Okay, great. And maybe, can I ask you, like, what's the benefit of having this same silicon in multiple platforms? Right, so the first obvious answer is that it allows us to leverage that investment across multiple uh, products. But then, again, it also allows us to have seamless interoperation between these products in the field. Okay, so you could imagine in the future you've got a 6500 and it's actually connected over long haul optics to a 5430 or a 4200 yeah. and using coherent transmission between the two. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is a, a critical part of the application space in that you may have sites that require a lot of switching. You'd have you know, one of the 5400 series products there. You may have other sites where you need just regeneration or smaller scale switching and you might have the Actiflex 6500 at that location. Okay, perfect, that makes sense. So the second piece of news was we really for the first time um, disclosed some of what the future of the WaveLogic family is going to be. And uh, there's some actually, to me, some pretty cool ideas about what the chips are going to do in the future and what it means to the network. So could you spend a couple of seconds talking about what happens with the subsequent generation of WaveLogic and why anybody should care about that? All right, so I mean it's, it's a continually evolving field, right? We're, we're deploying the T2 and R2 today and you know, we have the 40 and 100 gig, but of course, you know, the increasing demand for bandwidth isn't going to end anytime soon. And so we have to continuously innovate and bring to market other types of optical processors that allow us to do things like increase the spectral efficiency, right? And to have better coding schemes that allow us to have better compensation in the optics and so on and so forth. And so the next generation of these optical processors is going to allow us to go from 100 gigabits and beyond up to, say, 400 gigabit per second in these products. Right, so I, I can absolutely see to me, I mean, it feels like the, the progression of the wave logic coherent optical processors is going to be a little bit like the, the progression of microprocessors in the PC world where, you know, with a regular drum beat, we will have a new generation of technology that provides yet another milestone in, in reach and capacity and performance. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's, it's really leveraging the same kind of technology as the computer industry, like you just said. It's CMOS technology and, of course, you know, smaller scale and, and lower power consumption, higher processing rates will allow us to do things that we weren't able to do in a previous generation. And we continue to march down that road. While others are still struggling to get out their first generation of Coherent, we're learning from field experience with Coherent engines. Mm -hmm. And we're Great. putting that learning into the next generation of chipsets. Great. So actually, let me ask you something that as a network architect I'm sure you uh, care about, and that is, you know, at this show this week, there's been a lot of talk about capacity and that being a key benefit of Coherent. And you know, obviously, Sienna was the, really the first systems company to recognize the possibilities of Coherent. We've been doing it longer than anybody else. 10 years of R&D in how you use silicon to manage optics. A lot of the talk here has been about capacity, so is that all there is? It's all about capacity? or uh, It's a little bit of a leading question, I will say, but uh, is there something else interesting that's going to happen because of coherent? Yeah, so, I mean, while, while you're right, I mean, the, the first reason that uh, coherent was implemented in the first place was to get uh, an easy to manage solution for the higher bit rate services to go from the 10 gigabit boundary where we were to 40 gig and 100 gig and beyond. But the other half of this equation is that coherent optics actually allow you to do an awful lot more in the system to offer agility in the photonic layer, which was just not even available before. 
in a cost-effective way. Mm -hmm. So what we're looking at is if, you know, implementing colorless and directionless uh, photonics and really leveraging what the coherent optics can do for us in terms of optical filtering and in terms of path independence, things that we can do in the DSP that just weren't even available before. Mm. It actually seems to me that one of the, the big advances here is that for the first time we have a, a, a tunable receiver, right? We've had tunable transmitters yeah. before, we've never had a tunable receiver. So as somebody on the R&D team, does this like open up a world of possibilities? Uh, lots of whiteboard time and uh, maybe some new thoughts about what the network's going to look like? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's uh, like you say, it's the first time when we've been able to implement an optical filter that's not an optical filter. It's, it's, it's really taking the coherent receiver and putting the electrical passband of that receiver into the optical domain. It may not sound like much, but uh, for, for us it means an awful lot. It means that we can eliminate a whole layer of optical filtering from the network, and actually, while doing that, it simplifies the network and it gives us better performance. So, by the way, we are uh, at OFC in Siena's Innovation Lab. So this is a large truck that we've brought to the show to um, let customers come experience the equipment. We actually had to wait until the show was over because it's been a little bit jammed in here, so finally we got a little quiet time to do this video. So maybe can you tell me what's behind us? This is a very future-oriented science-y show, so I take it all this stuff is, is stuff that's just in the lab, right? Oh, no, it's, I mean, what we're showing here is, uh, is actually all generally available product, right? So, you know, people coming through, the customers who are coming through really wanna, wanna see what we're actually shipping today, right? Yeah, and uh, I mean, to me, it's, uh, it's incredible. I heard the statistic, we have now 5.5 million kilometers of coherent deployed. The 40 gig coherence been in the market since? Almost three years now. Yeah, May, May 2008. Uh, I think the 100 gig has been in the market since end of 2009. That's right, yeah. So we've been shipping the 100 gig since then as well. So let's talk about uh, what some other people are doing in this area. Is this an area where uh, basically all vendors have commodity technology or is this an area where CN is ahead? Right, so. Another leading question, by the way. That's right, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, really, it, it's, it, it's hard for us because we don't really get to see what the competitors are doing all the time. But in conversations with analysts and suppliers and that sort of thing, it really, it does seem that we have a one to two year lead on this technology for sure. Yeah, I feel like when I was at OFC two years ago, there was a lot of talk about how, um, how the coherent approach was exactly the wrong approach. You didn't want coherent for a number of reasons. Last year, everybody had decided they do want coherent. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, of course, that's obviously the same this year where coherent has really been a big theme of OFC. Yeah, that's right. I think we're seeing a coalition of all of the different uh, you know, development teams around the world that have finally come to the conclusion that if you want to do high bit rate services going forward, it's going to have to be on a coherent engine. Well, I think it's going to be fun to come back to OFC next year. We'll have the third generation technology right behind us. And thank you very much for watching.